Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody is feeling great and refreshed and ready for a wonderful week. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a subject that I didn't necessarily think was real, but it is real and it is very interesting. Probably even more interesting to me how long this topic has been real. Before we get into it though, I did wanna let you guys know if you don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. We just do things way more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. And over there we talk about more personal stuff. We go live over there. And I have a $2 tier where all of the true crime stuff that cannot go on to YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon under the $2 tier. Make sure you read the About section and what each tier offers before you join them. And I also have a Facebook, an Instagram, a Snapchat, and I'm also on Like to Know It. And Like to Know It is just a place where I can link all of the things that I use or like clothing items, furniture, makeup, stuff like that is all, I can link it over there. So all of those social media platforms are linked down in the description box if you would like to come and check me out. So have you ever wondered if our weather can be controlled by somebody other than God? Well, I remember not too long ago, I did a video on something and I got a bunch of comments in my comment section saying that our weather could be manipulated or controlled or, you know, hurricanes or, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I already got enough on my mind. I can't be thinking about the weather being controlled or manipulated as well. However, if you've ever wondered that, the answer is yes. Weather can be controlled. Now, according to Wikipedia, weather modification is the act of intentionally manipulating or altering the weather. The most common form of weather modification is called cloud seeding. Cloud seeding increases rain or snow, usually for the purpose of increasing local water supply. But I'm sure you're wondering, how does this cloud seeding even work? Well, small particles of silver iodide are sprayed into the clouds to attempt to affect their development. But it supposedly only works if they are sprayed into clouds that already have water vapor present in them, which which some say would lead to rain anyways. Now, this technique is already being used in countries with like bad droughts, such as the US, China, India, and Russia, which I could not help but to think like, hmm, I know one thing, three of these countries is always involved in something, if you know what I mean. Nevertheless, some say that places like China actually depend on this cloud seeding in their drier regions and that there's supposedly a strong suspicion that they used to wash the air in heavily polluted places like Beijing. And China does own the world's largest weather control machine that supposedly has the ability to alter the weather in an area the size of Alaska, after all. They even once claimed to be able to control the weather when they were hosting the Olympics. They also have a government office called the Beijing Weather Modification Office, like, Hello, the Beijing Weather Modification Office. Now in mountainous areas of the United States, like the Rocky Mountains and Sierra Nevada, cloud seeding has actually been used since the 1950s. Weather modification can also be used to try to prevent damaging weather like hail and hurricanes, which have y'all seen some of these videos of the hail that has come down in like the past couple years. One of my best friends, Alex, was sending me photos of, there were like ice baseballs, like 
this hail was so big, it could literally break windshields. Now, with that said, can weather modification be used to create damaging weather? Now, again, the answer is yes. According to Wikipedia, weather modification has already been used to cause damaging weather against an enemy as a tactic of military or economic warfare like during Operation Popeye. Operation Popeye was a highly classified operation ran by the U.S. military from 1967 to 1972. The clouds were indeed seeded to prolong the monsoon in Vietnam, which successfully disrupted the tactical logistics of the Vietnamese army. It is important to note, though, that weather modification in warfare has since been banned by the United Nations under the Environmental Modification Convention. But obviously, the technology does exist and it has existed for a really long time. Now, there's a project that was known as Project Cyrus. Project Cyrus was an attempt by the company General Electric or GE to modify the weather which ran from 1947 to 1952. Now during that time under the supervision of the United States Air Force, attempts were indeed made to create snowstorms and hurricanes with cloud seeding, which I don't know about y'all, but I just feel like before we even get any further into this, which we're gonna get into it, it's kinda like, I don't think we should be doing this. You know what I mean? You know, and GE even reported that they had positive results with that. However, the project was basically completely shut down and all of their research has since been considered controversial. Thankfully. With that being said, though, the United Arab Emirates has actually been cloud seeding since the 2000s. And by doing so, this increases their rainfall totals like by 15 to 30 percent every single year. In January of 2011, several newspapers and magazines reported that scientists had created over 50 artificial rainstorms between July and August of 2010. Let me say that again so you guys are understanding. It was reported that over 50 artificial rainstorms were created just between July and August of 2010. These artificial rainstorms were said to have sometimes caused hail, gale force winds, and thunderstorms, which was reported to be shocking to these local residents that lived there. But what materials were they using? Apparently they were using potassium chloride, sodium chloride, magnesium, and what was stated as other materials. You know, kind of like when you go and get a food label and it says natural flavors or whatever. It's just kind of like that other part of stuff that they were using. Most people would be questioning, uh, couldn't that be dangerous? Well, the U.S. National Library of Medicine says that the silver iodide, the same stuff that we use, has no known ill effects on people. Although people's hands may have remained yellow for weeks after being exposed to this. Now, I was talking about this with a friend of mine she was saying that she thought it was pretty funny that they know that vaping is bad already, even though they can't exactly prove it yet. And don't get me wrong, I don't think it's good for you, but this is fine. Literally spraying chemicals into the clouds to rain down on us into our pools, into our rivers and oceans and hands are turning yellow up oh, no no well there's no known illnesses now scientists are now officially producing rain in the united arab emirates by using electrical charges from drones they say that this is the new method of cloud seeding and it was developed to not have as many environmental concerns as these previous methods. Even though all of this information is already out there, and even though there has been, if you could call it that, explanations given or, you know, the statements of there's no known side effects or anything, not everyone believes that uh, weather modification is being used to help and not to harm. There's actually several weather modification like 
C theories out there. Now, I am not saying that any of these theories are true because I don't know. And of course, our leaders would not lie to us. <laughs> so these are just theories. But, you know, I mean, we might as well talk about them, right? So there's one that is very, very interesting. And this is a research facility in Alaska, and it is named slash called High Frequency Active Arroyal Research Program. It's also known as HARP, H-A-A-R-P. And this was built as a joint project by the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy back in 1993. They later gave control of this facility to the University of Alaska Fairbanks in 2015 because they didn't want to maintain the facility anymore, whatever that means. Now, its main feature is a high-frequency transmitter used to study the Inosphere, which is like known to be the Earth's upper atmosphere. Now, due to its creation coming from the military, HARP has been the subject of suspicion, and it's been blamed for global warming, lots of natural disasters, and even mysterious humming noises that come out of the sky. Now, even the Venezuelan leader, Hugh Chavez, claimed that HARP or a program like it is what triggered the terrible, devastating earthquake that hit Haiti. If you guys do not know about that, that's a whole nother video. These theorists say that cloud seeding puts suspended metals into the atmosphere so that HARP can activate those particles with their transmitter and alter the weather any way that they want to. There have been many, many claims that it has caused serious natural disasters and that there was even a documentary made about it by Jesse Ventura, who claims that HARP could even be used as a mind control device. However, a professor named Fred Mink, who is supposedly an expert in the atmosphere from the University of Newcastle, says that these claims are absolutely nonsense. And essentially, he says that the high-frequency radio transmission only interacts with the ionized particles in the inosphere way, way, way high up there. Weather at the ground level is caused by things much closer to the ground. He says that there is a huge number of HF transmitters across the entire globe, which directs medium to high power signals to the inosphere that are used for long range radio broadcasting and other purposes like surveillance radars and monitoring the state of the atmosphere just for research purposes. Now, that sounds a bit suspicious, right? They've got these particles in the air that they're much just for research, right? The balloon, it's just a weather balloon. Why would they need a doggone weather balloon when they've got literally transmitting particles in the air? I mean, none of it makes sense. It's like you're doing a color by numbers and the numbers are just all over the place and the picture just ends up being a big scribble scrabble. But just to make everybody feel a little bit more secure out there, he would definitely go on to say that there is no possibility of any of this impacting the weather and any such suggestion that it would, would be complete nonsense. So. Just don't even think about it. Don't even worry about it. So if there's all of this data, though, to support that weather modification is in use currently, like it's literally being admitted that it is being used in parts of the world, and it, we do know, allegedly, that it can be used to cause harm, how do we know for sure that it is not still being used to cause harm and it's only being used to cause good. How do we know that it won't be used for any kind of nefarious reasons in the future? Well, how we should know is because that is what they are telling us, and so that is what we should believe, right? Right, so what do you guys think? I think that the more that I research, the more I feel like I don't know, which is bizarre, right? You think that the more that you learn, the more that you know, but the more that I learn, the more that I don't know. 
I just don't understand. I have so many questions. I would love to sit down with like an actual like professional and get honest answers. Like, why are we messing with our clouding system? Wouldn't it make way more sense to reuse the water in the ocean than to literally mess with our weather? It just seems reckless. It seems like asking a toddler to drive a semi truck just because they can drive their little plastic beep beep Jeep, right? Like you wouldn't do that. Like stay in your lane. You know, I, I do understand needing to have water in dry places and how beneficial that could be. But I also understand that in a lot of these countries, especially the ones that are considered more advanced and rich, there is a lot of health issues. I mean, it seems like we've got more health issues now than ever. And when you try to try to when you when you try to think about why, I mean, you might as well stick your hand in a bucket and pull out a reason because there's just so many different things. And then you find out about this too. I don't know, y'all. It's weird. But again, nothing to worry about because they've told us that there's nothing to worry about. So what do you guys think? Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Do you think it's interesting that this has been going on since the 1950s that we know of? Like, daggum, why did it take so long for Americans to get electricity in their homes? If they was doing this, I mean, I feel like they have been holding out. They've been doing this since the 1950s. What else do they got going on? Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for being here. And I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.